Yeah, my name is uh, Dr. Joe Search. I'm the curator of dinosaurs at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. And I worked on a paper that was led by uh, Terry Bucky Gates, who's at North Carolina State University, and David Evans, who's at the Royal Ontario Museum. Yeah, so uh, for this species, there are only two known skulls. The first one was collected in uh, 1921. And so it's exactly a century ago that the first specimen and now this specimen are the only two. Yeah, this specimen was discovered in 2017 in northwestern New Mexico in a place called the Bistai Denizine Wilderness, which is a BLM managed um, pristine wilderness area of badlands um, that have been known to produce dinosaurs for well over a century. The, the other aspect of this research that this skull helped nail down was that this is a distinct species of crested dinosaur. So there are three known species or described species of Parasaurolophus. And uh, this one was always kind of in question. And this discovery and the preservation really allowed us to nail down that this is a valid species of Parasaurolophus. What's really great about this new discovery is how well preserved it is. So this new skull, even though it's not complete, uh, has the complete tubes, so the crest on the back of the head. And it's so well preserved that we can tell the different bones in really good detail. And that's allowed us to test some of these early hypotheses about how these crests were constructed. And what it shows us is that the crest of Parasaurolophus, which is really extreme, it's long tubes, um, it's basically the same construction as other crested hadrosaurs. Um, it's just an extreme version of that. The, the badlands today are barren and dry, but 75 million years ago when this dinosaur was living in this region, uh, it would have been much warmer, a greenhouse world, um, and it would have been living in lush swamps and forests along the coasts of uh, the Western Interior Seaway. Yeah, so the next step from this discovery will be to conduct CT scanning looking inside. So this was uh, an initial description of the external morphology. It solved a lot of questions about how the, the crest is constructed but to really test its function, so how it was used, we need to peer inside of the skull. And so using technology like CT scanning uh, and segmenting out each of the individual bones on the inside of the, the crest will tell us a lot about how this was possibly used by Parasaurolophus. I think one of the neat things about this discovery is um, its rarity. So the first, the first uh, example of this species, Parasaurolophus certocristatus, was discovered in the early 1920s, so almost a century ago, and no other complete tube uh, set on a, a, a skull of a dinosaur like this has been found since then. So this is the first one in nearly 100 years. Um, and it really underscores the importance of preserving lands uh, like this to be able to go back out and make these discoveries. And it also highlights the fact that we really need to keep getting out and doing this field-based research. There are still lots of fossils waiting to be discovered, and each one of them can tell us something interesting about the past. I've had experience working with PeerJ for other publications, and I found it to be really easy to work with. Um, and I obviously love the open access nature of it. And so being able to share fossils from public lands, I think, uh, should be made available to the general public uh, in a free, easy to access form. So I really love working with PeerJ.